Hi, today I will be painting this Sunday market picture. As you can see, these are very common in Australia. Every Sunday, people come there to buy or sell the local producers and this stuff. I took some sketches before and took some photos and sketches. So I made two of the sketches here. You can see one of the sketch here. Just try to. I don't have the photo at the moment, but so the sketches are here with me and. Now the sketches is there where I try to draw people different gestures and fruits and veggies how they will be looking like this kind of stuff. And uh, here I drew that one with a pencil but not in the details as you can see the peoples are not in detail except the very front people in the focus point. I'm using the 300 GSM paper which is a cold press 100% cotton and for the pen I'm using water resistant pen with 0.3 millimeter which is very which does create a very fine line the whole idea of today painting is the first of all I'm painting that one in in vertical style orientation and secondly I will be doing more hatching kind of stuff as if you have seen my previous video I was just doing the line work just very little line work in the with the watercolor but today I'll be doing line work in detail only for the focus point and the focal area of my painting the reason for that one I wanted to show you guys how you can use the line work and hatching technique to show the different values in your paintings in your images which works like looks to create an effect of illustration effect what you can see in the comic book or uh, like old style comic book or new modern comics this kind of stuff for the value uh, if you don't have any understanding of what values are probably in some other video I'll explain that one in more in details with examples and stuff but in short values are the how dark or light your color or pigment will be and which value is very important for doing any sort of painting if you don't have the value correct your painting will look dull to look dead here you can see that I'm trying to do the hatching doing some shading technique with a pen to create the way the dark places are where the dark would be so the benefits of doing that with the pen work is the number one as I said before it looks it will look like an illustration rather than painting which sometimes is desirable depending on what projects you are doing and secondly it will help you to create the values in when we start with the watercolor the first mistake we do we don't know what values to put in where which creates our painting dull in many cases at least it did for me when I first started but if you have this value in there so you even the color is not your your pigment is not dark enough in there but because of this pen mark or the hatching it will look like you have current value over there some people like this illustration type of look especially i like it so i won't bore you with showing my how i'm doing this painting with, with the pen sketches so I'm just fast forwarding that one but you can at least have a look I am not doing very detailed work in the backgrounds only thing I'm doing some detailed work is in the in my subject focus focal areas and maybe a little bit of this vegetables and fruits this kind of stuff I'm just doing a little bit of hatching stuff not in detail but at least you can understand that I'm trying to put some right values in there like darks with the hatching technique trying to put the darks in in there and uh, time to time I'm the more I'm going towards the background um, I'm trying to draw these ones loosely so I don't know what fruits or veggies I am 
painting at the moment, I'm sketching at the moment, all I know that there are some fruits and veggies and uh, these people, I'm trying to draw them loosely even though when I do my brushwork on there I will be more loose on them with the paint I will be always be loose style impressionistic style any detail work I'm doing I'm just doing with with the pen with the line work So, these are the people I'm, I'm sketching at the moment, even though I don't know when I'll be painting, whether they will be exactly like that or not. So, that's pretty much all my pen work. As you can see, it, it already looking like a comic book illustration, something like that. So if you love to do this kind of illustration, probably this will help you to understand how you can do this sort of artwork in a project or even if you feel like doing it just for yourself. So I have another pen, which is a brush pen that creates dynamic line work like you know if I push a little bit harder it works like a brush so it creates a dark line thick line and again with this pen I can do very thin delicate line as well so I'm just trying to establish my values over here even with the pen work so that it gets easier for me when I do the watercolor washes even though probably I will not have to do any sort of dark or any sort of heavy paint pigment on the paper probably with the light washes I can go with these this sort of technique Okay, so now I will start with the initial wash. Uh, probably I will start with the ultramarine blue. Uh, we'll start with the sky, and uh, in the meantime, I'm also thinking what my color tone would be for these whole images. I'm not doing anything, any experiment with the sky. I'm just uh, laying the colors in and just being a little bit of careful so that uh, the tint are not uh, covered with the blue colors. Let's uh, put some yellow ochre with blue to make it a bit of grayish. I'll probably put, put a bit darker in there. But let's do the first wash first. Then we'll probably think about it what we can do. Um, I will put some red wash in it to make it warm the whole thing. Uh, with a little bit of yellow ochre mix so that uh, it gets warm red and I'll probably do um, just thinking yep uh, let's make it everything everywhere make it be warm day Trying to make some green for the veggies and fruits. Maybe we'll put something, maybe we'll make that one as tomato. So put some red in it. As you can see, 
um, I'm just laying the colors in so you can do that one too like in your first wash as I said you can use any sort of color base color in your first wash and just make it as you want it to be so you don't need to be worry about anything worry about perfection or worry about colors going here and there you just put the color in and wherever you want dark wherever you want warm cool you just lay those color in, in your first wash and uh, you will see that they will they will get lighter when they dry once they get lighter they won't look that dark and on your second layer you can you can work with your color what color you want to work with that's pretty much all for the first wash I'll probably do some splatter and then probably I will wet till it dries so do some splatter in there this is a good time to do that one this is the good time for doing it and now let's uh, wait for a couple of minutes for these to dry okay it's dry now as you can see now I will be working on as you can see I've changed my brush to um, synthetic brush which is a bit, bit harder bristle and I'm using cobalt blue with a little bit of lemon yellow I'm trying to making some green color in there and I will be working on second layer now so have a look at the thickness thickness of the pigment I'm using and uh, just thinking we'll try with the veggies um, yep just to your darker values in this part so this is what you will need to do on the first layer you lay the base color in on the second layer you do either dark or the middle values in there if you do the dark what you do put the middle value to mix create the link between your first initial wash and the dark value this is what I'm doing now I did put it, as you can see I'm putting the middle value now with the dark merging them with the weight and weight also did the darker part I will start doing the top part now you can see the consistency of my paint it's really really thick and now I'm just using plain water to merge that thick paint and spread them out just making those dark with the borders so that it separates the tents just make it a bit more dark underneath You can see my color theme is kind of reddish 
and then like warm theme even though I have used the blue and that is the French ultramarine which is kind of complementary of that warm color just making this top with a neutral tint the most important thing of this painting or illustration is create that dark wherever it needs to be and that will make your painting alive I'm just marking with a thick paint on the hat now I'm just using fresh water to spread them the reason I'm doing it so that I know that where my value will be higher in that hat I'm just putting the pigment in there and from there I'm just spreading that pigment with the surrounding area with the lighter value whatever I'm doing my whole concentration is putting the right values wherever it needs to be I think I'll put the shadow light a bit later on let's do the skin tone illustration or painting like they're doing this skin tone is a bit sometimes you may say it is easy or sometimes it's actually not because you don't have much space to specify the variation of your skin tone because of the area is so small as you can see I just specify where my dark value would be now I will use just a lighter blue or probably just a fresh water just to spread them sit down at the bottom I put some dark dry brush stroke which creates some visual interest in there what I do in most cases whenever I use some wet and wet technique I try to put something in contrast with that one for example here like dry brush stroke whenever I use some warm color I try to use some contrast like cool color or something like that even though we don't understand but that actually creates the difference that actually draw people's eye and we try to find out always okay, what's good about this picture why it's looking good or something like that sometimes I try to put this sort of intentionally unintentioned mark which should look like with the gesture or the speed of my brush that's the speed of my brush mark or something like that but when you paint you will have to think ahead and you for each and every single stroke you will have to analyze inside your mind and perform it slowly so that it looks like it was unintentionally done like sergeant did what are the avocado maybe 
I try to put that color to show that. putting some dark red values for tomatoes and what else I can make them oh yeah let's let's make them cauliflower I don't think the color is correct here but whatever my point is not color here This is what I try to do in most cases in my drawing or painting. Try not to be too colorful, rather be harmonious. Even though the color doesn't match, this is watercolor, not oil painting or realistic painting, hyper realistic painting. So I don't need to match the color as long as visually they tells a story that I want to say it's okay with me sometimes it's good to leave some space for imagination for the viewers like these vegetables I don't know what are they and what I'm painting I'm just putting some green some red some dark some lights some yellows let's put some bright green at least that will make something like spinach or something I don't know the back color of the carrying bag is okay. Whatever, as long as it shows that it's a bag carrying bag, that's fine. Uh, I'm not sure whether these illusion crimson color is a good color for this guy's shirt. Okay, let's try to make it to purple. See, I told you not to be too colorful, but uh, I am here being colorful using different colors. It's hard to resist to use the colors, right, when you have so many colors on your palette. Even though I don't have too many colors in my palette, I only have blue and uh, red and yellow. And uh, lavender, a bit of white. And neutral tint. Let's use the lavender for this guy. And for them, just dab some colors like blue or whatever is that. When you have your focal point defined, the viewer's eye will be stuck in there. The viewer will not care about what exactly in the background. Background should be like a background like it should be there or it shouldn't be there something like that like you shouldn't be worried about that one okay, let's put all the people's face together 
this is what I do like when I put people's face with the color as long as I have the paint on my brush I just try to put them in all people faces so that later on I don't need to worry about that uh, I didn't like this color of this guy's paint it's too blue Let's make it a bit of dark. That's a problem with like you know you don't have when you don't have any colorful reference or photograph or you're not doing any plain work, plain air work. Like you get confused sometimes. You think like okay, let's do that, and next moment you just change your mind. make this place a bit of a little bit of shadow see I like this you know the glowing effect of the red coming towards the blue coming through the blue that's the beauty of transparent color and watercolor You can't get this effect with all of the colors if you're using the cadmium which has got less transparency if you put those sort of color on there you will see that they won't come through I don't know if it's a good idea to make this guy be becoming so many colors like blue and greens let's try and see what happens paint all of these guys now all red uh, all right let's do it yeah that's popping up because just because uh, it's against the green maybe complementary colors okay, let's make a bit of dark down at the bottom let's draw some apron this guy yeah I think I should I should make a video how to draw people quickly see when you draw them with a the brush with couple of strokes the people who are far distance and who are not in your focus point it's easy to draw them whatever mark you just put them they will make a shape of a people if you want them to you just need to be a little bit of tricky just make them I'll show you in one of one of the video how you can do that Put 
some dark somewhere so that whenever you put any dark you need to be careful about one thing don't put darks on sporadically and everywhere just connect them connect these shapes with the darks and things Fill them up, the background, maybe the people, far, or maybe some other tents, some people, some busy areas. Let's paint uh, some trees behind those tent. See this brush? This is uh, this is the brush I abuse a lot. This is synthetic natural hair brush. So one good thing about it, like this is an old brush, so it the bristles can take different shapes as you want it to be because this is a natural hair so it remains the same and you can sort of you can use them like you use a fan brush so I'll just make some far distant trees foliages Trying to make it a balance between illustration and a painting. It's not a fully like painting, painting or something like that. So that's why the brush strokes are different here. In a painting, I probably would do those trees in with one stroke, big fat stroke the background let's make, make some gray for the dark area in the foreground I don't want foreground to be too much of like the foreground needs to be something sort of invisible but again it's there so just making it some dull color let's do some splatter you gotta be careful about this doing this splatter technique not everybody should do that. The watercolor doesn't mean that use of the splatter techniques everywhere. I just need to fill up my foreground with something that's why I use the splatter and trying to use the dark and join them together.
areas where I don't want viewers eyes to be stuck there I paint them quickly or with the I fill them up with a neutral color so that the viewers eyes doesn't get stuck in there this is a good thing about a painting like you know with your brush stroke with the style of your brush stroke you can dictate where the viewers eyes should go that's where the composition comes different type of types of compositions you create on your painting you show them you show the viewers where they will have they will need to look at that's amazing isn't it but you need to learn how to do that one your composition needs to be correct your composition needs to be in such a way that viewers looks where you want them to look As we have some red colors here and there, accent color, I would say the accent colors, yes, only two people and the tomatoes having red, actual red, red. And that's why I'm doing the splatter with the red, just to show the existence of the accent colors. Shadow behind the hat let's make it a little bit dark this part of the hat I'm almost coming towards the end of this drawing so this step is called detailing the first where I did the initial wash and after that I built the painting on with with my initial wash as a base and later on in the end I'm putting highlights and bit of darks where it needs to be that's called detailing part this part is a fun part because all your base works been, been done already so all you need to do is just making sure you just join them together your your shapes your objects putting them together with with the detailing or some doing some shadows or doing some colors in the end I will do with some pen work even though I did the pen work in the beginning but in the end I will do some more pen work okay I think I'm almost done here what I will do, I will just take those types off. I will just leave the top one there just to see how it's coming up as. Then I can start doing the detailing, some little bit of detailing with a pen with white and black. I have this gel pen, I think it's an acrylic ink pen, I'm just using them for a highlight.
not every single people needs to have highlight on a top or on a shoulder. But doing some little bit of here and there so that it creates some impression of people's things, lights people reflecting on people's head or shoulder, something like that. I thought I need to make these cauliflowers a little bit more whiter. Just doing some highlights. These detailings are fun, oh boy. Final touch. Um, maybe a bit, a little bit of verticals here and there with the pen. The reason I'm doing pen now, some pen line works are not visible, as I wanted this image to be looking like an illustration so just making sure that there are more pen marks and hatching here and there so it looks like how I wanted it to be forgot to color this guy's hand That will do. It 
don't be when you do the watercolor don't be scared of your water or the color or pigments get smudged or they're not perfect just remember imperfection is the key for a good painting when it's done in the right way bit more highlights and I think after that I can call it a day see with the highlights it's taking form, good shape, and it's connecting the paintings. And that is all I think we've done here. I'm happy with that one. If you like it, please do keep coming to this channel and see more works done by me. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.